Great to meet you. Great to be here for a second year. I, I'm Seth Gaines, managing partner at CoinFund based out of New York. Um, today I'm going to talk about our experience investing in the intersection of Web3 and AI for the past three years. Uh, just uh, to begin, I'll talk a bit about CoinFund. CoinFund is one of the largest investment managers that focuses on crypto and Web3. We have uh, 1 billion US dollar assets under management, and we invest in early stage companies, Series A and Series B companies, and liquid tokens in the, the Web3 and crypto space. So, is AI and crypto hype? The intersection of AI and crypto. This is a uh, new category for uh, impact in both AI uh, and blockchains. Blockchains are always applied to uh, white spaces, to areas where an incentivization network can be effective. What's motivating this intersection now? A few things. Uh, strong investments in AI. So this is LLMs, and we've been talking a lot about that throughout the day. Uh, and more at stake than ever in terms of owning user data and having user data um, be uh, not owned by large tech companies. How do AI and blockchains converge? There are really two ways. You bring AI into Web3, and you bring Web3 incentivization and other activities into AI. Bringing AI to Web3. This is putting large language models uh, on chain and using them as analytics assistants. So there's a vast amount of data that's generated from Web3 activities using LLMs to help analyze that data. This is using uh, DeFi ML for modeling risk, so the intersection of DeFi and machine learning to model risk, predict volatility, create financial agents. So imagine uh, a yield vault that automatically optimizes based on uh, machine learning, DeFi machine learning. And this is using reinforcement learning for security. And you can imagine uh, some interesting cases where as you have um, AI models learn to look for vulnerabilities in uh, code on chain, you end up with competitive dynamics, competitions where different AI agents uh, try to optimally hack DeFi protocols. So it's not optimal to hack it right when it comes out, when there's no TVL, when, there's no, uh, when there are no assets in the protocol. But at the same time, it's not optimal to wait for TVL to grow, but then have another agent hack. And on the flip side of that, you can use AI to help reinforce the security of your protocol before it launches. And what's interesting is um, DeFi insurance has been a very interesting area of discussion. This will materially change the marketplace for DeFi insurance when you have the ability to both pretest aggressively and have very quick adversarial uh, testing of protocols when they're in market. Bringing Web3 to AI. What we mean by this is the democratization of resources, of data, of compute, and of capital. This is open marketplaces for training data, for models, and for inference. It's verifiable compute, knowing that the models are doing the computation the way that you expect them to do that computation, that the model was trained in the way that you expect it to be trained. This is self-sovereign data and personal agents, and it's token incentives for AI products and apps. AI products, what, what's the pipeline here? The pipeline is 
Uh, data, training, inference, and productization. All right, that's the, the path of development. And today this pipeline is owned by the big tech companies. And the intersection of AI and uh, crypto is looking to, to change that. As you can see in the bottom here, the main leaders, OpenAI, which has a relationship with Microsoft, Google, Anthropic, Inflection, Elon Musk's X, and Meta. How does AI go on chain? Well, you use zero-knowledge technology as verifiable computation. How can you trust an unverified output using things like zero-knowledge technology? So what's our view been at CoinFund? We believe that Web3 can bring a lot of open innovation and democratization to AI. We published this thesis, our Web3 and AI thesis, back in September of 2022, just around the time that uh, ChatGPT had its open launch. And we have a number of companies listed here that we've invested in in the space. Worldcoin, back in 2021. Jensen in 2022, Giza, Sindri, Bagel last year, and we have an uh, undisclosed GPU network uh, that we invested in earlier this year. We also have a number of companies that have pivoted into AI that we had invested in before that was a core part of their thesis. So let's go through a few of these businesses and just give a high level overview of what they're, um, what they're offering to the intersection of AI and crypto. And there's also an interesting dynamic just from an investment perspective around valuations that I'd like to discuss, which is back in 2022 when we started investing at the intersection of AI and crypto, AI valuations were already very high. Crypto valuations were already very high. But there was an interesting... Um, arbitrage where the intersection of AI and crypto valuations were actually quite low. So there was an advantage to being knowledgeable about both AI and crypto and leaning into investments in that space at a time when the market didn't understand the potential for um, open sourcing a lot of different parts of this technology stack. And now of course the intersection of AI and crypto is one of the most expensive uh, areas within startup investing. So BagelDB is a vector database that specifically focuses on uh, Web3 data as its launch area. This is a data layer for artificial general intelligence or autonomous agents. Um, and it enables open collaboration and next generation business models for ML data. Jensen. Jensen is focusing on training. We invested in Jensen in early 22. And Dreesen Horowitz invested the, the next year at a, a materially higher valuation. Jensen is democratizing compute for ML training. They're working on the very hard problem of decentralized yet verified training. And verified training enables models building models. Giza. Giza was an investment last year. It's a platform for on-chain verifiable AI inference that you can use in smart contracts right at the heart of the collaboration between AI and crypto. And they're launching ML models, again, in smart contracts that can power DeFi applications. Sindri. Sindri is uh, focused on ZK proving. It's a SaaS model, so traditional SaaS model, software as a service, for highly performant zero knowledge proving. They help to manage the pipeline for ZK circuits. Uh, these circuits are used for uh, ZK proving and enabling uh, zero knowledge machine learning. Worldcoin. How many people are familiar with Worldcoin? Quite a few. So WorldCoin scans your iris 
and then puts a hash of your iris into your wallet, into your Web3 wallet, and you can use that to verify proof of humanity. One person, one hash. You can also use it as a way to verify or validate content that you put on the internet. So if you think about a world where um, AI is generating very believable deep fakes, Sora from OpenAI, amazing video generated from text prompts. WorldCoin is a way for content creators to certify that they created that content. So in a more general sense, it enables you to um, avoid civil resist. It, it enables you to uh, have civil resistance, avoid civil attacks. Um, and it's a very highly uh, Web3 values compliant privacy technology. There's a really interesting dynamic about WorldCoin, which is Sam Altman, the founder of OpenAI, is also the founder of WorldCoin. Akash, a compute network. Akash is a token incentivized distributed compute network. They started out having a network of CPUs, but they're now bringing on GPUs uh, into that network. And they differentiate on cost, access, and flexibility versus similar cloud services. What are some of the open issues at the intersection of AI and Web3? Will Web3 source enough compute? Very important question. Actually, one of our uh, portfolio companies that's undisclosed is helping to not only source compute, but helping to coordinate the use of various compute networks. Will ZKML scale for large models? This is a very important question. As models get larger, as they have more tokens, will ZKML be able to handle these larger models? And how quickly will they be able to handle them? How will decentralized AI networks handle privacy? Very important question. As the power of AI increases, will the AI and Web3 communities converge? There's an interesting anecdote that I like to tell when um, the management uh, uh, fight was happening at OpenAI at the end of last year. A friend of mine who's an AI researcher was visiting us in New York. And he was reading an article on Sam Altman and OpenAI and he said, you know, there's a lot in AI today that depends on OpenAI. It might be really interesting to think about using crypto to decentralize AI. Is anyone working on that? <laughs> and I said, yes. And will products be compelling? Will B2B products be compelling? So business to business. And will B2C products be compelling? Business to consumer. This is a very interesting area. It's one core area that we invest in out of many. It's one that we came to early. And it's one that we think has many promising opportunities over the next few years. Thank you very much for having me.